My name is Eric Webb. I've been a barber for 25 years as of this year, and we are here at Circle City Barbers. My name is Philip Hernandez. I've been barbering for about 10 years, and we are in Orange, California at Circle City Barbers. I got into barbering when I was in high school. I used to cut my own hair and do back hair boogies and jack people up when I was about 15, 16 years old. And then I um, kind of lost touch with it, still would cut my hair, wouldn't do friends as much. I was in between jobs, kind of like dead end stuff, and I definitely knew I wanted to run my own business and work for myself. And I thought, what better way to, to start cutting hair again? I got into barbering, it was a little bit of two people that were big in my life. One was my grandmother, and then I had a mentor growing up named Jake Bricks. And I had grown up with his family. But going back to my grandmother, she said, you know, you're, such, you're a pretty good people person. Why don't you pursue this as a, it'd be a lifetime career? And I, you know, I thought about it and I thought about it, besides giving bad haircuts like we all do in the backyard. And uh, I said, yeah, I don't know. And then as a little older I got, right around 17 years old, I met Jake and we became pretty good friends. And he said, you know what, why don't, why don't you go to barber college? And he was already a barber here in Orange. And uh, he said, I'd give you a job. And I said, well, might be a pretty good idea. So that's what I did. I went to barber college, did my time, got out, and Jake gave me my first job I ever had. It was right here, downtown Orange. I was actually lucky enough to, as soon as I got out of school, um, get in uh, working at, at Syndicate Barbershop. And uh, uh, my buddies, Chris Cobb, was one of the owners at the time, and, and he put me in there. And uh, I did a couple of stints at some other shops, just some part-time stuff. But I think when I got into Syndicate, uh, about 10 years ago was uh, really like where I learned the, the like kind of set the pace of what we have going on now. Um, I was able to meet uh, Eric and Andy, one of our barbers now, and uh, we all worked there together. Um, it was just definitely a, a, a good place, a, a, definitely a great start. We come to find out we had like mutual friends. Like we probably were at the same shows. I was like back then into like going to all the Rockabilly shows in like the early 90s and, and we saw like all the same bands. Oh, I've been to this show. It's like, oh, I was there too. So we knew a lot of the same people. We probably, you know, maybe introduced before, you know, but um, just come to find out that we had a lot of comments, a lot of the same taste and, and we hit it off pretty well. You know, I, we kind of took each other pretty quick when I was when I was there, became really good friends and, and you know, we came to talking about, you know, doing our own things, how we would run something, you know. You guys named this Circle City Barbers. You didn't capitalize on building a brand or yeah. a name. You didn't say home of the world famous yeah. so-and-so. He, he wanted to throw my name in and I'm like, I'm not throwing myself under the bus on this one. If I'm going under the bus, you're coming with me. <laughs> so, so, uh. I said, you know, we'll, we'll come up with a good name that's solid and uh, that, that we both can take part in. I'm a person just like everybody else, my, regardless how long I've been in this game or barbering or whatever you want to call it. You hustled up. Uh, no, you know, <laughs> hey, I did hustle when I was younger, though. I did hustle <laughs> when I was younger, <laughs> and I still retain those clients, you know. Um, but it was... It, it's way better having a having a neutral name rather than you know um, for me than I did I just didn't want to be a part of it as far as my name goes. See, humble man. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'd rather just that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's, this is this is a it's a shop. It's not a one man show. The group of guys that we have here are top notch. I would rather I I, I can't ask for anything more in in um, in a crew of great haircutters, and this comes from my heart. I haven't 
I never thought I'd even ever own my own business, but to have someone work for me now, and I come in and I look at, I look at the gentlemen that, that work for me, I can't, hands down, I can't, I can't complain one bit, and I, and they're, they're just good. <laughs> they're great barbers. My name is Rudy Moreno, and I like to work at the barber shop because I like to meet new people and just hear barber talk. <laughs> My name is Andy Alcala. Uh, I've been here for a little over a year. Just have a lot of fun here. For me, barbershop is pretty much creating a community inside the community. It's having, it's turning your clients to friends to family, and it, it's a beautiful thing. It's something I've been doing for a long time, and hopefully doing for a lot longer. My name is Aiden Holtz. I've uh, been here, I think. Uh, nine months now, or so, and uh, I like working with uh, these guys. They're all all good guys, all very good, good barbers. Love, love learning from them. Uh, it's great to, to meet new people, uh, talk to people from all over the place, and talk about their experiences. And uh, yeah, it's also making new friends and brightening people's days with with the services that we uh, provide here. Um, it's awesome to see their, their smiles and and uh, appreciation for that. And, my name is Brady, <laughs> and terrific people, terrific location, you couldn't ask for a better spot. Me and Phil used to play music together around the same time, separate bands, but a lot of the same bills and stuff like that. And, uh, very comfortable, you know, right from the start. I started about a year after Marvin here, and uh, Eric made it, you know, Super easy for myself to get started. Give you an awesome opportunity, and I'm loving it. Good, good stuff. Oh, my name is uh, Alex. Uh, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Alex what? Alex. Uh, I don't know. For legal purposes. Legal purposes. Uh, it's, uh, it's Alex Miller. Um, uh, yeah, it's great working for Eric and Phil. Two awesome dudes. Probably the best people I could ever meet. You know, best bosses ever. Um, a lot of freedom, a lot of lenience, you know. Best barbershop in Orange County. People come from like out of town or, you know, drive like 45 minutes out here and just get a haircut, just talk to people, you know, chat a few, drink a beer or two, just, you know, hang out for a bit. My name is Marvin Moreno. Um, I just like working here because I grew up here, born and raised, and it's nice to, you know, see friends I haven't seen forever. and. <coughs> I don't know. I just like the fact that you don't have to put on a persona or anything, and everyone's welcome at the shop, so with no cool guy attitudes. Sometimes people come in after a rough day and they leave, and you know you make their day because uh, they come here and unwind and stuff, and it's crazy. And I started coming here and told these to go to Barber College, and when I got my license, I said, you know what, just come work here, and I did, which is cool. And it's crazy how. We've built friends over the years, you know, and we feel when some, we lose someone or whatever within the community, and it's just nice that people can come here and not feel alienated or feel like they have to look a certain way or <clears throat> listen to certain types of music, you know, and it's nice when it's nice when people come back, you know, and sometimes they make a, they live elsewhere, they make a trip out here and they, they come and get their hair cut and they remember who cut their hair and everything, which is cool. Uh, my name is Thomas Yandel. I've been here coming up on six months, I think. Um, I was born and raised down here. It's a really cool area. The shop has a really good vibe, good environment. Uh, everyone here is really cool, gets along, mesh well. Um, it's nice to see people you knew and grew up with come in here, and it's pretty much like a family. And you kind of get that, uh, that element, you pick it up pretty quick. So it's been a pleasure working here. I think a big part is carrying on a tradition. The circle's been around for forever, and we try to kind of keep the legacy of traditional barbering going. And even in this small group of people, I mean, we have generations of barber. You know, Eric and Phil have been cutting hair for, you know, before I even had my bar, before I was even born. You know, pretty much. <laughs> you sound old, man. Pretty much. I mean, I mean, whatever. I'm just saying. They've been cutting hair for however many plus years. It's cool. It's cool to, to keep it going through barbers, through age group, and like everything. We kind of try to put our own spin on it, and it's a cool spot to be at because 
people will come in and be like, oh, you know, I was just walking by, I saw a spot, and you like go and you know, give them a nice, clean, tight haircut, and you start fishing them up with the razor, and, and they're like, well, I've had, a, you know, anybody do that for, for 20 years, or with a hot towel or whatever, so it's- It's just, always in that voice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's cool to kind of keep that old school vibe and tradition alive in this community. You see a lot of people, since we've been here, just within the, the time that we've been here, about seven years, you've seen kids kind of grow up already, and, and that's been coming in since our younger, and see family members and, and the customers became, there's people that became like family to me already, you know, you made a lot of good friendships off of people that just been been local and, and valued customers and now you're exchange phone numbers and, and gifts at, at, you know, holidays and, and phone calls, see how people have been, you know, and uh, it's just been, it's been pretty awesome to, to establish relationships with, with customers and see them turn into friends. This barbershop in Orange. This for one thing I grew up here, so and I had my mentors growing up that also cut hair. And I saw what they were doing for people, you know, changing their lives, meeting new friends, meeting old friends, rekindling relationships, um, to stay tight, you know, and you know, just keep it tight, you know, and I mean, what more can I say? I'm just glad to be here with these guys. It's a, it's a great barbershop. I don't, I don't feel threatened by bringing someone in. People gave me a chance when I, again, going back to the syndicate thing, I was fresh out of school. You only learn so much, but you're still not even ready. And, and Eric, Andy, uh, Chris Cobb, the rest of the guys there, I learned a lot from them and it gave me a chance have up my place now and you know no one's stepping on each other's toes no one's not trying to pull anybody from my old place of work and they're not trying to pull everybody from here so it's just been good um and as for like rudy he's a good kid and i have no problem bringing someone in and not worried about about someone stealing people everyone's got hair even if you're bald there's still hair on the sides and it's got to get cut so I think there's enough heads for to go around. Well, it's important because it, it builds stepping stones for you know a young gentleman like him is learning how to conduct yourself, um, coming into being a man, not a threat at all. In fact, I'm I'm happy I'm happy to help young gents you know like him, especially like him because he's he's polite. He deserves a chance, just like everybody does. I find that he is a very, very good candidate for this occupation because he, he, he already understands he's good with people. He's a solid talker, and that's what it takes to, you know, make it in in, in this occupation. You gotta know how to talk about the rock on the ground, or you know, or how sick somebody is. You got guys that are. I don't mean to knock people, but they're been a year and a half out of barber school and they're like Instagram celebrity and they're just going after all these followers and this guy's got the claim to that and doesn't seek any of that. He does not need that attention, doesn't even want the attention. And I respect that because to me it's not about um, how many Instagram followers you have or you know all this other stuff. I mean it's just, it's, it's true passion for the, the work with the social media it's going to eat itself is what's going to happen then we'll we'll start turning back we'll revert to what good old-fashioned hairstyles are you know i don't know if i've seen you know and i always use this as an analogy with these guys joking around but it's like is there like hey i'm i'm so and so the plumber and i got seventeen thousand followers and i'm the coolest plumber in the world you know and Eric doesn't do any of that, you know, and it's, that's awesome. And for speaking for this shop, that's what I like. Everyone here is uh, hardworking guys. Everyone is talented, everyone, and there's no attitudes here. There's no one trying to be cool. There's no one, you know, um, trying to be anything more than what they are, just as a hardworking gentleman, you know. Sometimes things are just better left alone. And once you start messing with the good old time haircut, 
you know, it's it's it just carries on and carries on and it'll eventually self-destruct. A lot of people are, are saying, oh, traditional barbering, but then with, it's not. with, you know, designs, it's, oh, this is traditional barbering. And, and everybody, I mean, that's, I'm not knocking the skills at all because there's some amazing barbers out there, but to, to call it traditional barbering is, is not, it's, like, it's, it's just not. <laughs> it's definitely it definitely has grown, in even over the past ten years. Um, you got a lot of new upcoming barbers that have a lot of skill out there, and hands down, I find myself just salty now, you know. <laughs> but uh, but it's true. You got a lot of great talent, you know. Barbering is definitely just not flat tops and crew cuts anymore. Like with anything, with any type of uh, counterculture, I guess you could say, there's uh, there's always still like a downside of it. I feel kind of like there's some people are doing it just to to do it, just to because it seems like something cool to do. It's like you know you get too much of something and uh, you can burn it out. In my opinion, five years from now, barbering will be over flooded. And that's where I personally see it going. Just over flooded because people are taking it up as more of a hustle and the quality is being shot down the drain. Um, it's a shame to say. I mean, it's a real shame. And I, do, I don't want to say it, but I have to. That's where I personally see it because I'm in a barbershop every day, 12 hours a day. Um, I'm seeing what's going on, you know, outside the barbershop as far as, you know, styling goes. I talk to people, you know, it's just, it seems like every, everybody's, you know, you still have to go to school and put in your time to get your license. Whether you're good or not, that's questionable. I see barbering, um, it's not going away. I don't think it'll ever go away. It's going to have to have its highs and lows, but I think we will see. Um, I think it, it'll it'll go back to to the barbershops popping up. It's gonna, like I said earlier, it's gonna. Um, I feel like it might eat itself, like I said, and uh, you know, sticking to the just traditional straight uh, traditional haircuts is that that's not gonna go away um, as long as people just keep on delivering good product, the, the, the styles, the fads are gonna come and go. The designs and all the squiggly lines and all that stuff, again, that's, you know, that's, I'm not knocking that, um, but, but that, that'll pass. And, but you can't, you can't knock a, a, just a good solid haircut. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's been, it's, it's cool to see it uh, grow the way it has been. I, I'm, I'm happy with what's going on. You know, in the community, in the, a lot of it gives, it gives a, it gives a, it's a solid, it's a solid job, it's a solid job. Nothing, you know, nothing to be embarrassed about being a barber. It is a profession, and there is somewhat of a of a art to it, um, and I think following like the balance between the two is, at least for myself, speaking for myself is is really important of you know this is how i i feed my children this is how i you know pay my bills but also i look at it as a craft because you know you always want it whatever that you're doing you always want to be getting better at it and constantly improving and and you know just keeping up on on uh on on your 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 skill or your craft or I just been, I, it's what I know. This is, I mean, I've dug holes, I've driven trucks, but I always come back to it because this is what I know. This is what I love. I just like to see this industry stay afloat, um, weed out, as you said, like what when you, people refer to as like a hustle. I don't see it as a hustle. I see this as 
as my 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 profession and my uh, way of being social. I love what I do. Not many people. I, we don't have to sit behind a, a a desk and and you know get stacks of files on our on our desk and and be overwhelmed by it. We got it's like a different job coming in every every you know half an hour and and it's something new all the time and and to be able to continue to do that is is awesome and um just to keep keep the keep it going as as it should be it, it shouldn't be looked at as like my hustle how much i could just make today how much i'm like trying to just bang out a product it's not a product it's it's a like I said, for some of us, it's, it's a passion. It's just what we do, and and I'm not just trying to just knock something out for for a buck, you know. Jake Bricks was a gentleman that used to hang out heavily in the rockabilly crowd during the '80s and uh, '90s, up until his passing. Um, I was I was young, you know, and influenced by that by the rockabilly scene when I was probably about 13 and I used to I used to see this guy around and he was he's a pretty cool dude man he's real nice and he's one of those cats that took you under his wing and showed you the ropes and introduced you to music and culture and uh, people and uh, you know I really pre I really appreciated that because I didn't I didn't have a dad growing up so he definitely uh Again, put made the stepping stones for you know my early my early teens. Everybody in the world now carries carries out what kind of he has built in the beginning. You know, again, bringing bringing an edge, bringing an edge to the the barber community or scene. You know, as as we see it now, he really set the pace for what we have in Europe. In Japan and what we have here um, I mean it's, it's, it's he, he he did pretty well for himself he, he, was, he was a he was a good dude it's a shame we don't have him here today yeah I like being in the orange circle it's a good place to cut hair it's got plenty of cool style to it I'm into the 50s look tattooed sideburns greasy hair yeah, I get a lot of cool people in here. Some of the local rock really bands. A lot of cool cats. Yeah, man, I even cut Big Sandy's hair. And he's got a hot gig tonight. So here's my card. I'm here every day except Sunday and Monday. So come on down to Jake's Barbershop and I'll do you up, man. Well, right here, this, this, is, an, this is an old ad from uh, an orange, I believe it was the orange register. And, uh, that's Mr. Jake Bricks right there. That's Robert Williams, also known as Big Sandy. And there's my little ass in the back. <laughs> um, this is the man that started all, you know, this, uh, the, you know, the rockabilly tattoo culture off right here. Um, here in Orange. And uh, we miss him, but, you know. Without him, there wouldn't be what there, you see. Yeah, what you what you see, what you see today is wouldn't be anything without this cat right here. If you could tell Jake one thing, what would that be? Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Appreciate everything you did for me. My name is Takeshi Sohara. I've been doing barber 22 years. I own the Ufman Barber in Tochigi. I'm from Tochi in Japan. My name is Yahari. I've been doing barber around seven years. I'm from South Korea, Entourage Barbershop. My name is Kojiro Hirakawa. I've been doing barbering 
25 years, my shop is local barber shop, Hidakawa. I'm from Saitama, Japan. I'm here in the US for the first time. Uh, I'm opening the new shop in Tokyo this year, so I wanted to take a look here and uh, I wanted to feel the atmosphere here and uh, take it back to Japan to open that new shop. Uh, in Korea, we just begin the bubble culture. So many people cannot get bubble information from Korea. That's why we here. I learn American bubble culture, and I I go back to Korea and spread the American bubble culture. I wanted to come here. I mean, the syndicate barber shop for a long time. I visited here a long time ago, once five years ago. And uh, I really like this barbershop style, like a uh, laid back and uh, metal. But I just wanted to come over here to visit this shop. Barber culture in Japan getting bigger now. It used to be not like this big, because everybody on the barbershop is kind of old guys, like uh, over 60 or something like that, but uh, now it's kind of new wave coming Japan and it's getting popular as like a new style. I think barber culture I'm doing now is from the US, but uh, I think I can mix it with Japanese hospitality or everything. I want to make it like a better thing, American style, but uh, also Japanese style. Actually, in Korea, there is a lot of many barbershops. So we are in Entrez Barbershop, we, we learn American tra traditional barber culture. After that, we will, I hope, spread this culture to Korea. The barber culture in Japan getting popular uh, in these couple of years and the uh, we can see the barber culture in magazine or anything in Japan now. It's the proof it's getting popular. It's more young people start want to be a barber now. But uh, I don't want to make it like fashion, like a temporary fashion. So I need, I have to build the barber culture in Japan. I've been here like a couple of days and uh, like mostly hanging out with Mr. Hirakawa and the uh, team visiting the barber shop and the uh, antique mall or hanging out. Today I'm very honored to work at the syndicate, the shop I dreamed about. Uh, in California, weather is fucking cool. Syndicate of barber and the customer, everybody, everybody is uh, very cool. I would like to say that I will back to Korea. I will, I will stay here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm opening the new shop in August this year, so I'm trying to find some stuff for new shop stuff like a gray or barber chair and stuff. I also ride a motorcycle, so tomorrow I go with friend from Japan, living here, they're having fun. There is a barber culture in Japan for a long time, but it's the just barber. The barber culture here is connected to cultures like car or tattoos, motorcycle or whatever. Like it's connected to the other culture. That's why I, I started like it, the Baba culture here. It's like the man's culture. You know, the barber is the man, and the, the culture connected to is a guy's culture, like 
like a hot load or like more like tough, you know. That's that's I like about it. Oh, there is no American barbershop like syndicated in Korea. That's why I like uh, they working like the pre as a friend, dance and music and drinking. Yeah, I like the American culture, barbershop culture. I like I like it because it's very like a natural, more like a casual. It's not too much. It's natural. That's why I like it. Generally speaking, this style is not really accepted in Japan because people will think if they they see. The people has tattoos, their yakuza or mafia or something. I'm opening the new shop in Tokyo because I think it's the only place tattoo is accepted more, and uh, I want to make it more casual. I think I, if I'm working hard and uh, doing decent job and uh, then the people stop. Thinking it's good. I want to make people to think it's casual thing. So I try hard for that. Uh, actually, in Korea, tattoo is not legal, but I like it. That's why I tattoo on my body. Uh, tattoo is a one of the culture that the near in the future, tattoo and barber are mixed naturally. It's hard to do this style in Japan because it's not a thing in Japan to have tattoo on the body. You want to have a lot of customers all ages and every kind of people I have tattoo on the shoulders but uh, I'm not trying to hide the tattoos but uh, it's kind of tough doing the job with tattoo but uh, I, I hope it will be changed after Olympic in Tokyo in 2020 I'm very glad to meet the barbers from different country. Now it's very worldwide. I'm so glad to be able to build that relationship, no matter what country I'm from. I'm so glad. Thank you. Uh, first, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to syndicated barbershop and the team. I'm glad to meet Ulpuma and the local barber. Uh, next time, I will invite this guy, uh, these two, and the city kid barbershop to Korea. I promise that. I'm having fun to work, work at the barbershop, even in Japan, and uh, now it very helps me to make friends like. Uh, the people like same style, so I'm so glad. Thank you. Those magazines you making, it's documenting the culture as it is. So. We can see the pictures of this culture. I always can inspire from the magazines. I feel it's like very traditional, and uh, I can see everything in this culture from here, like a traditional barbershop or like a new barbershop or everything in the magazine. So I love it. Mm.
I've been displaying the poster from your magazine at my shop, and uh, I bought the poster on eBay. What I like about is everything, the color or design or everything. It's hard to see those stuff in Japan, so I always inspired from your stuff. So. I want the shop to be known for just good quality service, a good friendly place. Um, again, no no hype, no hustle. Just a place that you know you can come inside here and sit down and, and get a nice haircut, um, relax, talk to your fellow neighbor who's sitting next to you and, and you know, socialize and just get good customer service. It's all a place where people could come, know, they're, they're gonna, know that they're gonna get top-notch quality. Um, and know that they can relax, enjoy their time. Like a staple of the community, you know? Just people that know they can count on coming here and, and receiving great service. It is a haircut, and, but also it's uh, conversation, friendship, um, um, you know, you build, build relationships with people. A little bit of psychiatrics, um, a little bit of bar friends, you know, um, information highway on both parts, customer and, uh, and barber. Um, yeah, no, it's, it goes way beyond just a haircut. And I, and I think that's most barbershops, not, not only here, but most barbershops. Friends, riding partners, a little, little bit of everything, a little bit of everything. Rite of passage, rite of passage. Um, from a young man getting his hair cut by his father's barber to him having kids and him taking him to now his barber or his grandfather's barber and now his barber and now he has his own barber and he'll grow up. It, it's, it's, it's a big, big rite of passage for a lot, for a lot of people, I think. Um, not to mention, you know, a man wants to look as best they can look. Everybody wants to look nice. At least, I hope, you know, at least for us too. Puts money in our pockets, but no, anyways, uh, you know, you, you come inside here and, and, or for not just here, but any barber shop and most men, you know, again, going back to the, 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 um, uh, association thing. You kind of walk inside here and at a barber shop, not again, not just this one, but a barber shop, you walk in and, and you kind of know the guys or girls, whoever, you know, that, that may work at the place and everyone comes in and, and wants to, to sit down and, and, and talk and get cleaned up, look nice. You come out and feeling, you feel a lot better once you get out of a chair. I know I do if I'm looking shaggy and when these guys cleans me up on my way home, I feel so much better. Just it, seem, it seems to me and hopefully it's, it rings true that, you know, the barbershop is a place to, you know, find all those aspect of how, you know, how I want to feel, you know, how, how a man wants to feel. Come on down to Circle City Barbers, get some wings, some tips, and a beer. Have a nice one. <laughs>